Hello, sports fans and baseball fans. I'm here with a pretty daunting video for you. It's an update on the CBA, the Collective Bargaining Agreement. I knew it! I knew it was bad news. Wait a minute. I have an idea. Maybe if you tell me the bad news in a good way, it won't sound so bad. Now, um, I, I haven't been updating this as they've been going because most significantly, today, as you're seeing this video, this is the day after the deadline that Major League Baseball gave to the Players Association as a date for negotiation without losing any um, regular season games. And from what I've been seeing, uh, you know, I'm recording this before the end of the deadline, but from what I've been seeing, it would take a small miracle for you to be watching this video and there's an agreement, which would be great. I'd love it if there was an agreement, but there probably isn't as you're watching this, but that would be awesome. If they even had the framework of an agreement, that would be awesome. Um, I, I don't know what the how that would affect the deadline or the, the uh, loss of games if there was a framework rather than a, a solid hammered out agreement, but um, I digress. So uh, anyway, the CBA is um, negotiated between the major league owners represented here by the Penguin and the players. Represented here by this uh, rather uh, weird-looking pitcher. In fact, look, I'm going to have to ask you to go ahead and just come back another time. I got a meeting with the Bobs in a couple of minutes. Uh, I wasn't aware of a meeting with them. Yeah. They so um, the the crux of this um, uh, negotiation, I think, boils down to the fact that the players, and this is the impression I've been getting from everything I've been watching, uh, the players feel like they've been taking an ass whooping over the last two CBAs. And um, they are trying to, essentially, it seems like they're trying to get everything back. They're trying to recoup back, you know, like tip the scales way back in their favor in one negotiation, which is not, that's not going to happen. So we'll talk about some rumors and some other things that are going on um, as we get on in the video. But um, basically here, I want to lay out what some of the contention points are and what some of the stuff that they've agreed on is so far. As you may or may not know, they have agreed on a universal DH. So the both sides have agreed. So you're going to have the American League and the National League with the DH going forward every year. Um, I'm, you know, as far as how I feel about that, it, it's fine. I mean, I'm more of a traditionalist. I like pitcher batting better. It's better for strategy and everything. But I can see from the players' standpoint and from some of the fans' standpoint, you know, it reduces offense. Um, and it also, um, uh, the pitcher bat, um, reduces offense and having a DH extends the careers of a lot of guys. Um, you know, people like, um, Nelson Cruz could probably only get a job in the American league because they have the DH right now. So anyway, um, the crux of the stuff that they've agreed on is, as I said, um, a universal DH. No more draft compensation for signing free agents. Um, if you hadn't known about this, um, when a team signed a um, a new a newly minted free agent, uh, they would um, the the team who lost that player would get draft compensation in the upcoming draft for having lost them. They have apparently agreed to do without that. However, it sounds like maybe now the owners want to kind of go back and attach that to something if the uh, players 
insist on certain other things, which we will get to, but they have tentatively agreed on that. Um, they have agreed to a salary increase for players from zero to one year of service from $570,000 a year, which is a lot. It's a lot more than I make, to $610,000 a year. Now, I'm still fine with that because, you know, you read, and it's probably true, that the average major league career is only three or four years long. So, I'm fine with that, but um, the players want this to be incremental. They want, like, years zero to one to be 610000 Then they want it to go up to 600 and something thousand. And, you know, eventually stopping at something like 720000 in the fifth year. So I don't think the owners are 100% on board with that. I'm not sure. But anyway, that's, that's not the biggest deal, though. We'll get to the biggest deal. Um, and then they also have agreed tentatively, which I am against, to a draft lottery. So that, And they haven't even really agreed on how many teams should be in the draft lottery. The owners have agreed to a draft lottery, but they only want the four worst teams in Major League Baseball to be in it. The players want something like the top eight or 12 worst teams to be in it. I absolutely would be against that because I know that there, you know, you know, and I know that there are teams that tank. They do. They play their younger guys. They, you know, they bring up their young, you know, because the rosters expand and then the teams that are out of it they just look at their younger guys. It's like an extended spring training. Um, and you're not going to win with those guys unless they just are all spectacular for the time that they play. But, um, you know, so there is, there is tanking that goes on. But I have been, and I know I'm comparing Stratomatic to, um, to real life, but it's the same concept. I've been in leagues that have a lottery and I have finished dead last and I have finished dead last playing the best players I could play and putting the best team I could put out on the field and when that lottery came up I think I finished dead last three there was three seasons where I was the dead worst team in the league maybe four in none of those seasons did I get the first pick none of them um, and in some of them, I've gotten like the, you know, fourth or fifth or sixth pick. Ridiculous. So there are teams, I'm against it because there are definitely teams that can't win, that are, that are bad. The Pirates. The Pirates are bad. It doesn't matter. The Pirates could play their top line guys. They could play their worst guys. They could play their minor league guys. It doesn't matter. They're terrible. But. And so they would always finish near the bottom. So the Pirates don't have the player personnel to compete. They just don't. They shouldn't be punished for that by picking fifth when they finish, you know, first or second or third worst. So I'm against a lottery, but I'm certainly against a lottery where you put eight or 12 teams into it. It should only be what the owners want, the top, the, the worst four. If you're going to do that. So uh, anyway, they, they've agreed to a lottery, but they have to agree on how many teams are going to be in it. Now, here's the big sticking point that they are still a long way apart on, and that's the luxury tax. Now, remember, the luxury tax exists because in past negotiations, the players agreed to a luxury tax. Now they don't like it because the owners, because of how the owners are uh, finagling it. Well, you know, you agreed to it. So, I don't know. But anyway, um, I digress. The owners want to start the luxury tax at $214 million, progressing over the five years of the CBA to $230 million. The players union wants it to start at 245 million from what I've heard 
and progressed to 260 million over the five years. Now that may have changed. They may have come down on that a little bit and the owners may have come up a little bit on it. And as a matter of fact, I think I heard something that said the owners were willing to say that the first year of the tax could be 230 million. Now, again, I'm more in line with what the uh, owners want because the players, I mean, let's be basic about this. The players want to get rid of, they would like to get rid of the luxury tax, but if they can't get rid of it, they want to make it so high that it's, you know, a non-factor that, that you might as well be able to spend as much as you want. If you're the Dodgers, you know, you might as well be able to spend like they, the players want to start at 245 million. There's probably, I'm going to guess, only one or two teams in Major League Baseball right now that have a payroll of $245 million. So, um, they, you know, they want it to be, they want to start there and um, progress even higher to, you know, let these teams sign these big, huge contracts. And that's another thing that the, own, that the players are concerned with is that they've seen the average salary in Major League Baseball across the board. The guys that make a ton of money and the guys that are just coming up and making 600,000 or whatever they were making, they were making 570, so. Um, but across the board, they've seen the salaries decrease by 15%. Personally, I'm in, I'm in favor of that because a lot of that decrease, that decrease hasn't been coming from the young guys that have made it to the ma that just made it to the majors. The decrease has been coming from the high tier guys and the middle tier guys that make a lot of money. I mean, you know, I don't care. I, there, there is no player, there is no baseball player on the planet that has ever been born that is worth $400 million over 10 years. There isn't one, they don't exist. But, you know, guys like, um, uh, you know, uh, Harper and, um, and Trout are making that kind of money. And yes, I'm going to say it, even they are not worth that much money. They aren't. Sorry. So, uh, they're, they're miles apart on the luxury tax um, and the player service time. Um, I think that there, there's some contention there about it. If you don't know, um, right now, my understanding at least, I'm going to say this, I'm going to put the caveat out about all of this stuff. My understanding of the service time is when a player comes up for the first one through three years, it's all up to the club. They can pay whatever they want over the major league minimum. So they could pay the player... If the minimum right now is 570, they could pay the player $570,000 for the first three years. Then from years three to six are arbitration. Every one of those years, the player can go to arbitration um, with, you know, an, an arbitrator and they present their side and what they want. And then the owners present their side and what they're willing to pay. And then the arbitrator has to decide between the two salaries. He, he can't, he can't decide. He or she cannot decide to give, to you know, cut the difference and give them something in the middle. They they have to decide either in favor of the player or in favor of the ownership. And that happens for each one of the three years that um, from years uh, four through six. And then after year six, they can become a free agent and they can sign with whoever they want for anything they want. The players don't like this system because if you are 23 years old and you have been in the major leagues for six years, uh, you made the major leagues when you were 23 and you've been in the majors for six years, you're now 29. And your declining years are only like a year or two away. And, and they don't like that. Um, but you know, I think part of the decrease in the salaries over the last few years has been the fact that the, um, 
uh, that the owners have wised up a little bit and they now realize it's stupid to give 15 or 20 million dollars a year even on a short-term contract a four three or four year contract to a 38 year old player and again i don't care who the 38 year old player is it it's stupid to give them 20 million dollars a year for four years for three or four years when they're 38 because you know if they're 38 they signed a four-year contract they're going to be you know um they're going to be like 42 41 or 42 when that contract is over and in the last one or two years of that contract they're basically going to be spitting up on themselves but you're still paying them 20 million dollars so the owners have wised up and they aren't giving those contracts out anymore and the players realize that and now we're trying to figure out other ways to make that money so i mean they say they're fighting for the young guys and that's great i'm all in favor of them fighting for the young guys but when they talk about things like a draft lottery and um, a uh, um, and the luxury raising luxury tax to ridiculous highs, they're also talking about trying to make more money for themselves. And basically, if you are Bryce Harper, you don't need any more money. You don't even need forty million dollars a year. You don't need twenty million dollars a year. I mean. If somebody gave me like the the players, the young the young guys, six hundred and ten thousand dollars a year. Let's say that they, they negotiate that and it's six hundred and ten thousand dollars a year for the first three years, the major league minimum. Well, that's that's uh, over three years. That's one point eight million dollars. I'm pretty sure if you handed me one point eight million dollars right now, I could quit my job and live the rest of my life. I'd be fine. So, you know, there's that. So, uh, you know, but everybody's got their, you know, their feelings about this subject. Um, now, there is a player who is a current player, um, Trevor May. And his theory is especially since the owners have said once March 1st hits, if we don't have an agreement, there's going to be games canceled and we don't know how many games depends on how long it, well, how much longer it goes. But you know, we don't know if they negotiated on March 1st, how many games does that wipe out? I don't think anybody has come up with a solid number on that, but Trevor may believes that the owners have in their head or really Rob Manfred has gone to the owners. And he has told them, we can miss X number of games into the season and still be okay and get the maximum return from the uh, negotiations and win the negotiations. There's a like a sweet spot where we lose this number of games, but that will result in us getting um, a... Uh, a favorable like winning the negotiations and we won't do too badly with the games that we lost with the gate revenue and everything now I don't know if that's true and I don't know if they're wrong about that um, impression because if you don't have people come back and you don't have to the ballparks and you don't have people watching you know, do you think Comcast is going to keep paying five hundred million dollars to clubs to tele to uh, televise their games if nobody's watching the games? No. All the years, Ray, has been baseball. America has rolled by like an army of steamrollers. It's been erased like a blackboard, rebuilt and erased again. But baseball has marked the time. They won't because they make their money from the commercials during those games so so that's what I got for you um, what do you guys think about it um, you know I'm getting tired of going through this I thought after the last two CBAs that the two sides had you know 
decided to live peaceably and and you know realize that they can't have work stoppages like this now i will agree that this work stoppage is the fault of the owners because they are locking the players out and the players have said and i'm sure it's true that they would come to training camp and they would start playing game you know spring training games and they would start playing the regular season even without a without a CBA in place and you know playing under the new the old CBA CBA rules i'm sure they would do that here's the problem you would get all the way up to the playoffs and if they had been going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth like they've been doing and only inching up and inching up and inching up and they didn't come to an agreement by the playoffs, then the players would go on strike. And then you wouldn't have playoffs like you didn't have in 1994. So um, I guess that's why the owners decided to do this right now because they wanted to nip it in the bud, maybe lose, you know, an acceptable number of games, whatever they think that is, and then get on with the season and win the negotiations. And so they feel like they're going to accomplish that with the lockout. Again, I don't know if that's true, and I don't know if that's correct, if they're correct in that assumption. So let me know what you guys think. Um, Always willing to hear what the baseball fans think. Um, you know, we're the ones that really uh, get hurt in this because on one side you've got millionaires and on the other side you got billionaires. So we will, um, you know, I'll, I'll consider having an update on this maybe sometime later down the road or when the CBA is finally signed, but I'm not going to talk about it every single day like all of the talking heads are doing because... Really, because nothing almost changes from day to day. But this is a drop-dead deadline date, so um, I felt like we needed to put the video up now. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Remember, if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. And uh, if you want to see more content like this, let me know. But that's going to be it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.